I remember him being 10 and not, ha not being sick. But after that, I was uh, sick. Uh, I started, uh, there was a TB epidemic going on all over Alaska. Tuberculosis is hard to diagnose. It seldom gives us pain. It doesn't make us feel sick. We can walk around. We can sleep and eat just fine. But we may have TB and not know it until we are beyond the doctor's help. We can get rid of TB, but we need your help, all of you. Tuberculosis has been around for a long time. Europeans brought it to the Americas. TB first came to Alaska with Russian explorers and missionaries. Between 1948 and 1951, doctors found that 75% of children under the age of eight had positive TB tests in the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta. The number was higher for the older children. 92% of children between the ages 7 to 8 had TB. In the 1930s through the early 1950s, not only was TB the number one cause of death in southwest Alaska, killing thousands of people, but the treatment was as difficult as the disease. Many were sent to sanatoriums, and if you arrived as a child, you would grow up in a sanatorium knowing little about your culture or way of life. Five of us were away, so they must have suffered. Katie Roll is an elder who got TB twice and was forced to live 13 years in sanatoriums in Dillingham and Seattle. Children, wives, and husbands didn't know if they'd ever see their loved ones again. Katie Roll's niece, Evelina, is a public health nurse in Bethel. She grew up hearing how her mom didn't know her sister. Well, my mom was raised mainly by her dad, and she was pretty close to her, and um, I think with her um, brothers that were sent away, during this time, medical professionals believed that sanatoriums were the only way to prevent the spread of TB. To stop the infection from spreading, patients had to stay in their rooms by themselves for weeks. Years went by in the sanatoriums. Coming back was hard. I had to learn my own way all over. Well, I didn't learn much uh, before I went. And then after I got home, I found out that I, I didn't learn lots of native voice. In 1951, the Bethel Hospital burned. Patients like Katie Roll were sent to sanatoriums throughout the Pacific Northwest. The hospital was replaced by a smaller health clinic run by a new doctor overseeing the region. Dr. Beryl Michelson from Iowa had only been a doctor in Alaska for three months. She wasn't new to the bush, having spent years teaching in rural Alaska while she saved up money for medical school. When she arrived in Bethel, Dr. Mike saw that TB was widespread. There were few doctors and no hospital, and the epidemic was growing. There was nothing she could do except bed rest and isolation. Patients leaving hospitals could catch again or even spread TB, and follow-up treatment was nearly impossible. There was, however, a new antibiotic, streptomycin, that could be used to treat TB. To help her patients, Dr. Mike bypassed authorities to get the drug before it had been approved in the United States. With the drug, people could be treated as outpatients. 
those who were no longer contagious could go home if they returned every few days to get their shot of antibiotics. It worked, and Dr. Mike wanted to spread the program to the villages. That was how she met Michael Chase, a leader in Nunapichok. The two of them formed a partnership which would change the trajectory of TB in the region. The story began when Michael Chase had his first daughter. He was told that his mother, who had tuberculosis, could not hold her granddaughter because she would infect the baby. In the Yupik culture, it would have been seen as rude to tell an elder they could not hold a child. Mike was uh, devastated that the grandma couldn't hold the granddaughter. So he decided to divorce his efforts to find a cure for tuberculosis. His campaign began by showing his community what they were up against. With Dr. Mike's help, Michael Chase brought the only microscope from the Bethel Hospital out to the village. He got a microscope and had them look at a TB germ. Told them that there was medicine that can cure it or prevent it. They changed their mind. They decided that uh, the folks with TB in Nunapichuk can be treated. Michael Chase became the first chemotherapy aid which would be later renamed Direct Observation Therapy Aid. The approach worked. Rates of TB dropped dramatically. In the 1950s, Alaska's TB rate was around 1,800 cases per 100,000. In the 1960s, after Dr. Mike and Michael Chase started their program, cases dropped 400 cases per 100,000 people. TB continues to decline today. Today, public health nurses like Mary Berliner still work together to end TB. Oh, Michael Chase was, he had to have been really amazing because he had to get the approval, first of all, from the elders to do what he was going to do. Okay, so, I mean, that, that took courage. Um, I mean, stepping out from what you normally do into the medical field. I mean, looking at germs under a microscope for the first time, learning to sharpen needles and sterilize them and inject people with those needles. Um, he, I mean, he and Dr. Mike had to convince the elders that he could do this. I mean, that's huge. Patients like Moses when given a TB diagnosis, are no longer afraid of being sent away from their family or dying. Hey, Moses. Hey, How are you doing today? How are you doing today? Okay, so um, we're down to two cells now. After, after the hospital, when, um, when you move on to the next step, you could either, the, the public health nursing are nice enough to work with, work with you, in order to make it easier on either side. But now we have people stay at their homes. It's so much easier. It's not traumatizing for that family, you know. And it's like little pills that they take for six to 12, nine months. Um, or if it's LTBI, latent TB, it's 12 weeks of directly observed therapy. In schools, we screen communities where TB is active. And these are some of the questions that we, we will ask folks um, if they've ever been treated for TB or if, if they've got... Today's them. treatment uses high doses of medicine for shorter periods of time. But it's still important to watch for active signs of TB. These include prolonged fever, Night sweats, meaning you wake up with a wet shirt, a persistent and productive cough that lasts more than two weeks, and unexplained weight loss. It's even more important to get tested because sometimes TB doesn't show symptoms. This is called latent tuberculosis. 
it means the bacteria is sleeping in your body and could wake up. The only way to know if TB is there is to get tested. Okay, so we either get a skin test that re where our body will react to a protein after two or three days and you can get a bump if you have the bacteria in your body or you can get a blood draw and then their blood, if you have the bacteria in your body, will react with certain chemicals in the tube. If you don't know that you have TB, it's best that you make an effort to get yourself checked. And if, you, and if it does come out positive, there's nothing to worry about because the doctors and nurses do their absolute best to make sure you're comfortable and understand your situation and how to get through it. All people in the YK Delta are at risk and should get tested regularly to prevent a TB infection. It'll take the whole community and they have to be willing to get help from healthcare workers, you know? I mean, we're, we wanna help them out, let them get healthy, you know, and educate them about health. Nice work. Oh, you're so strong. Don't look, okay? Don't look. look at me. Just close look your eyes. You're good. TB is curable, preventable, and nothing to be ashamed of. Alaska has the highest rates of TB in the United States. With your help, we can meet the UN's goal of a TB-free world by 2030, and that starts right here in the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta. Getting rid of TB is not impossible. The late Michael Chase of Nunapichok and Dr. Mike have broken the trail for the rest of us and the world to follow.